And all of the people rejoiced in everything which gloriously came forth from him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. These words are the ending of this morning's gospel. Not only remind us uh, in a salutary way of the duty which is ours to rejoice in everything that comes from our Lord, whether it be for our correction or whether it be for our consolation, for our instruction, for our perseverance, whatever it might be. Today, the church on Ember Saturday of September renders her solemn tribute with this long and ancient mass to Almighty God, begging for the graces of, of a new season, a season to be passed gloriously, doing the will of God exactly as he wants us to. You can easily see in the very beautiful old Mass today so many instructions and so much consolation and a rebuke or two so that it could indeed have occupied, as it used to, the early Christians for the many hours of the night until the dawn of the following Sunday. It ought to be able to give us some thoughts to occupy us, not only this Saturday, but throughout the fall season. That is to say that uh, we don't generally associate with penance, but today is an ember day. And we have to remember that penance must always be performed by us. The saint who comes today, along with some of the lessons read in this ancient mass, reminds us of another duty which goes along with personal penance, or in this case fasting, that we're obliged to do today. That is to say that the duty of alms deeds, of giving to the poor. St. Thomas of Villanova became uh, the bishop of that city purely by mistake. When the king was writing out the letter of appointment, his secretary put in accidentally the wrong name, and when the letter came to be signed, the secretary wanted to rewrite it, but he said, no, this must be the will of God, let's appoint him instead. Well, he turned out to be a very holy, learned Augustinian friar with a very great love for the poor a great strong devotion to Our Lady, just exactly the kind of thing that that city and that era needed because uh, Spain was flush with the gold of the New World and life was getting very, very worldly. And someone who didn't really care about the goods of this world who, but cared about the poor and God's honor. He was just the kind of a bishop that those people needed at that time. He reminded the people of their duty to give and to give generously to those who are in need and to the great works of charity of the church. Um, I heard a report on the, on the radio last night about how the Jews who today, I believe, are keeping their one day of fasting, called, they call it their day of atonement, or Yom Kippur, also do associate it still, some, because the Jewish religion has certain little bits or remnants of truth in it, along with great amounts of superstition, they do associate it still with alms deeds. And we always have to try to remember to make that connection as well. See, on this day in the Old Testament, this is the reason for some of the lessons, the high priest would impose his hands upon a goat, and that goat would symbolically receive the sins of the people. And then the goat would be driven off into the desert to die, and then at the same time, Sacrifices, many, many sacrifices would be offered up, and the high priest would go with blood into the Holy of Holies to pour the blood out as a symbolic atonement. Now, all of these things were a preparation for the coming of our Lord. As St. Paul tells us in today's epistle, we have the perfect sacrifice now to atone for all of our sins, so that as one of the lessons prophesied, our Lord is going to take our sins and throw it into the deep, far away from us. But at the same time, we have to repent and at least do some penance, and we have to have a care for the poor. It's interesting that the Jews, in spite of their deep superstition, have still that idea. Instead of a goat now, uh, they use a chicken. It's a strange kind of a superstitious ritual. The Jews swing a chicken over their head uh, the day before the Day of Atonement, and they recite some kind of a formula to transfer their sins to the chicken. And then the chicken is killed and given to the poor. There's still that idea. Give to the poor. There's still that idea. You have to do something about your sins. Some atonement is required. And the rabbis, in spite of this little sacrifice, still require their followers to keep at least one day of, of fasting. 
at something anyway. It reminds us that even in the false religions, there are these basic elements. What is to be found in ours? Let us never forget. It is a lesson of these masses. It is a lesson of our saints. These are the words of our Lord himself. And we Catholics should rejoice in everything, the universa, that comes gloriously from our Lord. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.